Hey guys, and welcome back to How to Make Elements from Household Materials. Today's element will be sulfur. We'll be extracting some sulfur from iron pyrite, also known as fool's gold. Iron pyrite can be found in some rocks, however it is generally not found exposed to the atmosphere as it weathers relatively quickly. Although you can head out and search for some pyrite in rocks yourself, it is also commonly sold in gift shops, so you could just buy some if you prefer. To begin the extraction, 40 grams of pyrite was heated with a torch in a can to decompose it. Pyrite is iron disulfide, and by roasting it in the air, it reacts with oxygen to produce iron sulfide and sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is toxic, so this must be done outside or in a fume hood. Once no more sulfur dioxide is evolved, the iron sulfide was left to cool and an apparatus was assembled. We will be reacting the iron sulfide with hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen sulfide gas, so to control the gas generation, a pressure equalizing addition funnel was set up on an Erlenmeyer flask. A three-neck round-bottom flask with a gas tube entering one arm was then set up and connected to the hydrogen sulfide generator. Lastly, the outlet tube was directed into another Erlenmeyer flask with a baking soda solution to neutralize any hydrogen sulfide that makes it through. With the apparatus assembled, around 21 grams of iodine and 200 milliliters of water were added to the round-bottom flask with strong magnetic stirring. Then the iron sulfide was slurried with some water and added to the Erlenmeyer flask, and the addition funnel was charged with some concentrated hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid could be purchased from hardware stores as muriatic acid. The stopcock of the addition funnel was opened slightly to begin generating hydrogen sulfide gas, and the Erlenmeyer flask was heated with a hot plate to help speed up the reaction. It is important to wear a gas mask and perform this in a fume hood or outside, as hydrogen sulfide is highly toxic. The hydrochloric acid reacts with the iron sulfide to produce iron 2 chloride and hydrogen sulfide gas. The hydrogen sulfide gas then reacts with the iodine in solution to form hydroiodic acid and elemental sulfur. Iodine is not very water soluble, so the strong stirring helps to dissolve the iodine as the reaction proceeds. Interestingly, the solution with the iron sulfide became yellow, indicating iron 3 was in solution. This was surprising because iron 2 chloride was expected to form, which produces pale green solutions. Anyhow, as the hydrogen sulfide reacted with the iodine, the solution color lightened from the formation of suspended sulfur. Once all of the iodine is consumed, the hydrogen sulfide generation can be stopped and the outlet tube can be removed from the baking soda solution to prevent suck back into the flask. Once the apparatus was disassembled, the sulfur suspension was vacuum filtered. During the filtration, I realized that some of the iodine hadn't reacted and it was stuck to the stir bar with some sulfur and thus protected from the solution. I tried to scrape it off into the filter and interestingly, as the solution filtered through, the color disappeared and dissolved hydrogen sulfide gas in the solution reacted with the iodine to form more elemental sulfur. The solution was filtered a second time to recover this newly produced sulfur as well. After filtering, the filtrate clearly still contains some dissolved iodine and the filtered sulfur was also dark from iodine contamination. As a side note, the filtrate could be distilled to recover the hydroiodic acid produced. The iodine could be left to sublimate over a few days, however the sulfur will need to be purified anyways, so the mixture was added to a flask with some toluene and a reflux condenser was added on top. The solution was heated reflux to dissolve the iodine and sulfur, and then it was cooled to allow the sulfur to crystallize out while leaving the iodine in solution. After crystallizing the sulfur out, the solution was filtered and rinsed with a bit of toluene to give some nice sulfur crystals. In total, 5 grams of sulfur was obtained. Although this is a fun way to extract sulfur, the easiest way to obtain sulfur is by purifying it from gardening sulfur. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in a future project. Okay, bye.